Godfall was the first game confirmed for PlayStation 5, and ever since then, the IGN audience has been super interested to learn more. There's been a pretty steady um, cadence of information coming out about the game. We're starting to get a better idea uh, of what the game is going to look and play like. And now I'm joined by Keith Lee. He's game director on Godfall. Keith, thank you so much for joining me today. So fun to, have, to be here. Thank you. So uh, let's dig into a little bit more. Um, I think you, you wanted to talk a little bit more about the Valor Plates in Godfall. So what exactly are the Valor Plates? So Valor Plates, think of them as weapon platforms for your character. So as you play, you can craft additional Valor Plates that have their own characteristics, their own capabilities, and more importantly, they have a different augment constellation that is associated with each Valor Plate. So think of each Valor Plate as having their own activation for capabilities. They all also have an always-on trait. So for example, in this case, you have Typhon, and each of them would have a different elemental damage capability. And what's unique about Valor Plates is the fact that think of them as star constellations, where you have a constellation and you have augments that you can then pick up. And those augments can then be slotted into those nodes on the constellation. And they have to match the color of the augment against the constellation. And the fact that the proximity of those augments and how you arrange them affect the final output and the effect of your Valor Plate. So for example, even if I have the same Valor Plate as you, if I have Typhon, and I also have exactly the same augments, the way we arrange them in your grid will actually impact and affect the final result of your Valor Plate. So you actually get a very different fingerprint depending on your play style and the way that you'd like to approach the game. I see. So uh, you mentioned crafting the Valor Plates. Is it a, a matter of finding crafting items in the world and then using those to build the Valor Plates? Yes, you can acquire. What you need to do as you play is you acquire Valor Plate cores. So that's the fundamental resource for you to forge and to create your next Valor Plate. There are a total of 12 Valor Plates, including the first gotcha. plate that you own, which is Silvermane. So the other 11, you can go back to your base and then you can go to your forge and then construct them. And typically it does require Valor Plate cores as well as some additional resources that can drop from enemies, completing missions, and even in custom game modes and in treasure chests. Interesting. So what was the sort of the, the, the inspiration for uh, Valor Plates? It seemed like a very uh, unique idea for this genre. We want to, again, make this into weapons platform. So there's a lot of weapons as well as augments that you can place to customize your overall play style. The inspiration for us actually crosses bridges a lot of different areas. Of course, for us, there's shard plates from Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive, all the way to Iron Man and a lot of the Marvel sort of comics and, and just sort of being able to play off that fantasy of being able to equip uh, medieval armor. And so us, to us, really, the inspiration is uh, medieval European Western knights and being able to make, make it our own and to kind of build our own identity around these very elite, powerful, knight-like valor plates that you can then equip to become godlike. So can you give us some examples of how uh, choosing specific Valor Plates um, allows you to customize your gameplay? So taking a step back first, out of the 12 Valor Plates, imagine that we actually have a lot of different types of, of plates and a lot of different types of functions. So for example, we have balanced Valor Plates, which are hybrid Valor Plates. We have specialized Valor Plates, and we also have exotic Valor Plates. And each of them also have a different role. So some Valor Plates are geared to be high DPS. Uh, some of them have more uh, focus on cooldown abilities and being able to accelerate and decrease your CDs. We have certain Valor Plates that focus on debuffs when you play in co-op, as well as crowd control 
and of course tanking. So a lot of configurations that we see players do is picking a high DPS player and then also slotting in two non-DPS categories such as hmm. CD abilities all the way to elemental damage and it's a little bit also a function of the mission that you decide to to take together as well as the type of boss uh, that you're going to encounter. We have many different types of mid bosses as well as end bosses which are very difficult and we want to make sure that players have a many different ways and configurations to defeat a boss. Very cool. Let's move on to uh, Archon modes. And I guess, first of all, am I pronouncing that correctly? You are. OK, perfect. Nailed it. Uh, what do we need to know about Archon modes? So Archon modes can be broken up technically on a high level as an ability that you can activate during your mission and during your run. And you have a bar that fills up. So every time you break urns or you defeat enemies, these Ethereum balls come out of the enemies. And you can pick them up, and it'll fill out your bar. And once your bar is full and it's fully charged up, you can then press the L3 and the R3 analog stick simultaneously to then activate it. What's unique about how we think about Archon abilities is that a, they're tied very specifically, uniquely to a Valor plate. So for example, Silvermane is focused on CD abilities. Vertigo is focused on shock. And for example, Mesa is focused on poison. And poison would, for example, trigger and create a dot on enemies. But when they die, the poison will then spread to nearby enemies as well. And you have mm -hmm. shock. And of course, you have a lot of other elemental capabilities. And I would break up Archon abilities into four fundamental pieces. There's one aspect of it which we view more as a passive, where if you just equip that equipment, like Silvermane, you're going to then get a special always on trait that is active when you have that Valor Plate equipped. Now, when your Ethereum bar is fully filled up at any point during your mission, you can then activate them. So for example, Silvermane would summon three Ancient Glaive allies that would then fight for you and with you. So you can use that. And as long as you understand what the activation is, that's always available to you in the time that you find situationally important to you. During the activation, we also have a, a buff, a set of buffs that are enabled during the duration of your Archon Fury and then lastly, we have triggers where when you actually trigger a condition based off of your Valor Plate, it would actually escalate that effect so that during your Archon Fury time period, you can, as a high skill player, continue to ratchet up the damage or the effect of that as long as you continue to follow the conditions of the escalation. So it's really fun because you have an instant you have a passive, you also have a buff as you continue to use the trait, and then also you can uh, really maximize the effect of your Archon ability associated with your Valor Plate. Wow, well, it definitely sounds like uh, there's a lot going on with the gameplay and the combat in a good way. Like there's a lot of different uh, choice and, and options that players are going to have, uh, different ways to approach combat. Um, I know that you can play through the whole game, Godfall, uh, single player if, if you like, or you can with uh, co-op, I believe it's up to four players total. How does the experience change in co-op? Uh, like, for example, uh, can can you choose the same Valor Plate as your friend? You can choose the same Valor Plate. They're all independent. And actually, co-op is for three players right now. So okay, gotcha. three. You, can, you can recruit and then slot in and jump into a game or a mission or a custom game mode with two other players, uh, two other allies. And of course, all of you can choose the same three, or you guys can all choose uh, each of them to be distinct and different. In terms of um, the co-op experience, again, we've seen a lot of really interesting combinations where there might be Vertigo and Armistice and Sirius. Sirius is a tank. Armistice is much more DPS and uh, crowd control related. And people work really well together. They 
uh, start to assemble very specific builds and operate together. And we also have co-op related benefits. We have a, a banner that you can you can drop onto the ground and then it would create a area effect buff. So there could be a healing banner that you could drop on the ground so that you can draw enemies into the circle while you heal. And so a lot of players also have different types of banners that they drop based off of the timing of the mission and the type of mission that you're going to play. So you have a lot of tools available to you, not just the Valor Plate in itself, but also some of the consumables or tools that are that you can use during a mission. Very cool. Well, like, like I said at the top of this gameplay demo, uh, the IGN audience is super interested in Godfall, and I think we've sort of just barely scratched the surface of what all the game offers here. But unfortunately, we're out of time today. Keith, thank you so much for uh, filling us in a little bit more about what to expect from Godfall later this year, and uh, we can't wait to play it. Thank you so much.